LMS stands for Learning Management System. There are around 2 million searches on Google each month. The Global Business Learning Management System LMS, economy will grow by 12.48 billion US dollars by the year 2024, according to Technavio forecasted. So, what will be LMS? Does your cooperation need an LMS? Or you wish to do business with LMS? In this video, I am going to share with you some insights and knowledge into LMS. This video was brought to you by Minor Parrot Studio. Minor Parrot. Help educators to use technology easier. Learning management systems had been created to determine learning and training gaps using analytical reporting and data. LMSs are focused on online learning delivery, but support a range of uses, acting as a platform for online content, including courses, both asynchronous-based and synchronous-based. An LMS can offer classroom direction to get instructor-led instruction or even a flipped classroom. An LMS can offer online classrooms for users to join remotely online. An LMS delivers and manages all sorts of content, such as video, audios, and files. Modern LMSs consist of smart algorithms to produce automatic recommendations for classes or learning plan based on an individual's ability profile. From the elementary schooling to higher education markets, an LMS will incorporate many different performances. Okay, for a short and clear definition of LMS. LMS is a software application for administration, documentation, tracking, reporting, automation, and delivery of educational courses, training programs, or learning and development programs. Perfect. Then now, we are cleared about the definition. Then, let us have a look of the development stages or the short history of LMS. There are numerous historic stages of distance education which preceded the development of the LMS. Here we listed four major stages for you to understand how and where LMS comes from. Stage 1. Correspondence Teaching the initial testimony of a bidirectional communicating arranged correspondence route comes in England. In 1840, when Isaac Pittman initiated a shorthand program wherein he delivered a passing of the Bible to pupils, who'd send it back into complete transcription. The achievement of this course caused the basis of the phonographic correspondence culture in 1843. This is the earliest known example of the use of materials for language study. Stage 2. Multimedia Teaching The idea of e-learning started growing in the early 20th century. Marked by the look of audio-video communication methods used for remote instruction. Back in 1920, Sidney L. Prezi developed the very first teaching system that provided multiple kinds of practical exercises and query formats. Nine decades after University of Alberta's, Professor Emmy Zert transformed this system into an issue canister able to evaluate issues and solutions. Stage 3 – Telematic Teaching from the 1980s, the contemporary telecommunications beginning to get utilized in schooling with computers present from the daily usage of higher education associations. Stage 4. Online Teaching. This is the look of the initial LMS. These conditions explain drill and practice applications, more complex tutorials, and much more individualized education, respectively. The first fully featured learning management system, LMS, was called EKKO, developed and released by Norway's NKI Distance Education Network in 1991. Three decades after, New Brunswick's NB Learning Network introduced a comparable system intended for DOS-based instruction and committed exclusively to company learners.
Okay, here is the overview of LMS history. From first correspondence to multimedia telematic, as well as early stage of online teaching. There are some keywords we can get about LMS. Content. Multimedia. Interaction. Software. System. Now, let us have a look. What is the main features of LMS should have? Feature 1. Managing courses, users. The LMS may be used to create professional structured course content. The teacher can add text, images, videos, audios, tables, links and interactive tests, slideshows, etc. Moreover, you can create different types of users, such as teachers, students, parents, visitors, and editors. It helps control which content a student can access, track studying progress, and engage student with contact tools. Teachers can manage courses and modules, enroll students, or set up self-enrollment, see reports on students, and import students to their online classes. With much of the integration of new resources being controlled by technical guidelines, outlined by SCORM, shareable content object, reference model. Feature 2. Live Classroom. Offering online video classroom operations where users can join the class remotely. Classroom should have teaching interaction tools such as whiteboard, raise hand, camera, chatting. Also the rule of control the classroom is very important for getting better quality of the online classroom. Such as lock user to use some features. All sessions should be able to be recorded for playback. Easy for scheduling and joining, etc. Feature 3. Tracking and Reporting. LMS can enable teachers to create customized tests for students, accessible and submitted online. LMS platforms should allow different, multiple question types, such as one or multi-line answer, multiple choice answer, drag and drop order, essay, true or false, fill in the gaps, agreement scale and offline tasks. Some LMSs also allow for attendance management and integration with classroom training. So, administrators can view attendance and records of whether a learner attended, arrived late, or missed classes and events. Feature 4. User Feedback. Students' exchange of feedback, both with teachers and their peers, is possible through LMS. Teachers may create discussion groups to allow students' feedback and increase the interaction in course. Students' feedback is an instrument which help teachers to improve their work, identify what to add or remove from their courses, where students feel more comfortable and what makes them be more included. Okay, those are the fundamental features of LMS and most LMS should cover those. I think the difference between LMS providers is the concept or philosophy to implement these features to their LMS systems. Some of them have different focus areas or some of them have varying user flow. But the goal of LMS should be same. It helps users to manage learning and teaching. Now let us have a look of the LMS industry. This is the report about LMS market on 2020 spring from edutechnica.com. We see Canvas was slightly surpassed, Blackboard as the number one in the US market. Moodle, still number 3 in the US market. Following by D2L and Sakai. For worldwide, the picture is different. Moodle having over 50% of market share in Europe, Latin America, and Oceania. But still there are other players and some of them focus on different market needs or geographic areas. 
such as Chamilo, have a good market in Mexico, as well as some of other Latin countries. They all did very well and which is very good for the users as well as the LMS market since we can have more options. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any views regarding LMS, please comment on this video. I'll talk about Moodle on next video. Let us explore how Moodle grow up as a leader of LMS provider and other insights and knowledge about Moodle. Please subscribe to our channel to receive notifications when the video is published.